Meanwhile, uh, next up is uh, uh, Brian Murray. He's going to talk about running for local office. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Brian, for uh, putting this on. It's a great time to be able to talk about some things. Um, I don't know really where to start. There were a lot of questions that were tossed around before, which you know I'll be glad to deal with. Um, and, and I'm thinking about the projects that I have been involved with and, and what may, may interest folks. And probably the, the one that, that comes to mind is the, uh, the bike trail. Milford has, I think, a beautiful bike trail. It's about six and a half miles. And um, I've been involved with that from the start. Um, so it was the mid-1990s. We had a loose collection of individuals. There were probably about three or four of us that were interested in this, this concept of a bike trail. Uh, other communities um, were getting involved. There had been a feasibility study done, which looped uh, a number of towns on about a 26-mile circular run, uh, primarily through Metro West. I think it went up to Sudbury and back. So that was the feasibility study that gave birth to the bike uh, trail in Milford. Other towns made progress before we did. Holliston at the time, uh, Barbara Gardner was in the uh, house at the time. She secured an earmark of $500,000, and you know we thought Holliston was, was way out in front of us on that. So I remember sitting in my office. It was one night, um, probably about 5 o'clock. It was, it was winter. It was dark out, and I got a call from Bob Buckley. Bob is the chairman of the Conservation Commission in the town of Milford. Wonderful guy. Uh, he's been there for years, uh, very dedicated, very qualified, really does his work quietly, under the radar, but he's, so, he's responsible for so many uh, environmental things that have happened in the town of Milford. And Bob called me and said, Brian, you know, what do we need to do to get this, this bike trail going? We're just not getting anywhere. Um, I had just come off of a project where we uh, finished Draper Park, uh, in Milford, and also the Stacy School, which was a whole other uh, issue. And um, so I said, Bob, the first thing we're going to do is get legitimacy. So we need to have the Board of Selectmen formally appoint a committee. Um, and that's what we did. We went before the Board of Selectmen. There was probably about a half a dozen of us. And um, the Board was very receptive at that time. I want to say this was December 1998, somewhere around there. And uh, we got in front of the board, we told them what we wanted to do, how we were interested in it, and the board formally appointed a committee. That was very significant. Uh, the board also designated our town planner, Reno Deluzio, uh, to be the town's representative on, on the bike trail. That was probably the best decision that was ever made. Reno, if you don't know, is a former selectman. Um, um, involved in so many projects over the years, uh, town meeting member for, for many years, um, very, very intelligent person, very dedicated, and he really uh, took that project under his wings, and he and Bob Buckley really were the, the, the spearheads of that, of that project. So with Reno's efforts and Bob's efforts, we were able to um, apply for uh, TIP money through the uh, Transportation Improvement Program, and the key to that was that opened up the door to 80% federal money, 10% state money, and the town only had to contribute 10%, of which in-kind contributions could be considered towards that monetary amount. Well, we had a full-time town council, we had a full-time town engineer, we had a very active conservation committee, all of whom gave us technical assistance on this. I think the expenditure by the town of Milford, even after all these years, I, I don't know if it's... I shouldn't say, I don't know if it's over $150,000. I mean, the number is very, very low. And this is a multi-million dollar project. So that committee formally met um, on a regular basis. We worked through the process uh, with the uh, consultant, applying for the TIP money. That took time, but it came through, and we built the project in increments. And uh, the final increment, which uh, connects... Um, which connects um, uh, Mount Pleasant Street to uh, behind the Big Y, which is about 1.5 miles. That was done as part of a zoning trade-off on a development called Walden Woods. They had an over 55 age restriction. They wanted to get rid of that. It was under a planned residential community bylaw. And in negotiations with the town, we basically said, OK, we want you to contribute a community project. 
They did that portion of the trail to the tune of about $1.5 million. The town didn't pay anything, and now we've got a 6.5 you know, mile bike trail, which I think is second to none in the Commonwealth. Um, it, you know, as, I'm not sure, as Harold had said earlier, um, it takes a lot of years to do that. It takes a lot of dedication. And the folks on that committee did that, you know, led by Reno, Bob Buckley, they stayed with it. And um, there are still tweaks done to that bike trail. So, I mean, in terms of projects that people are involved in, um, number one, you've got to target what you're interested in. Number two, you've got to be patient because nothing happens quickly. Number three, you've got to be committed. That means involving all the stakeholders that you can. Um, you know, and I don't want to steal Harold's thunder, but I mean, Harold did a wonderful job in bringing the uh, uh, bus service to the uh, town of Milford. But, uh, you know, when we sat down to map that out, the first idea was, you know, who are the interested parties? Who's going to utilize this? Who's going to be in favor of it? More importantly, who's going to be against it? And we figured out ways to bring all those folks together, address their concerns, and, 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 and go forward. Um, I think that's the key to any project. I mean, any project that you want to ask about, I could tell you, you know, who was against it, who was for it. And I've said this story before. Um, I chaired the committee to build the uh, senior center in Milford, and that was uh, the late 90s. And um, at that particular time, I don't know if you remember, we had a very small elementary school that was a senior center. There was only seven parking places. And there was one uh, senior who was totally against this project. We don't need this new senior center. You know, this is going to be a waste of money. He was writing letters to the editor. He was a big opposition to the project. So we went forward. We got funding for it, and um, I, I chaired the committee. We needed people on the committee. And I went up to him at the senior center, and I said, look, I want you to serve on, on my committee. And I think he was flabbergasted. I thought he was going to fall over in the chair. You know, he's like, he's like, why do you want me on your committee? I'm like been saying all these things in the paper and I'm really against it. I said, because you're paying attention, number one, you have some legitimate concerns, some legitimate ideas, and I want you at the table with me so that we can address that and do it the right way. He became like the biggest advocate for it. So, you know, that was just, you know, one way that, that, that I'd handle that. But, um, I mean, I've been involved in a lot of things, so I know there's a ton of questions before. So maybe it'll be better if you can just ask me questions, and, and then I can see what you're interested in. Well, yes, young lady. Thank you for calling me young. Um, <laughs> so what you're saying, basically, is before you go forward with this project, it's helpful to kind of do a use assessment on pros, cons, kind of getting the lay of the land before you... Yeah, I think you've really got to evaluate, you know, where you're at with things. Um, you, you've got to really see what your uh, pluses are, what your minuses are. And uh, you've got to work to build consensus. Um, you've got to reach out to the stakeholders, um, folks that are interested, see what their concerns are, and, um, and, and, and address it. But then sometimes you just need to go forward. And sometimes you need to be a forceful voice. And, um, you know, you, you, you can get people upset by doing that. And, 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 and I've done that. I mean, there was opposition to the Stacy School Project. You know, back in the early 1990s, Milford had gone through... And this is probably a foreign concept. I, I, I know Mike, you know, saw us because he's on the FinCom, and fortunately things have been really good. But, you know, in the early 1990s, we had three straight years of negative free cash. Now, contrast that with this year. What's the free cash number this year, Mike? Is it 3.1? You know? So we had negative free cash. Can and you we, explain what that is for the people who don't? The, the, that, 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 that. <laughs> That, that, that's funds that are available at the end of your fiscal year that haven't been committed to particular projects. So it may be um, uh, one-time events, there might have been a sale of an asset, um, it's money that returned, uh, just one, sorry, it's, it's money that's returned through uh, budgetary operations, but it's basically what it is, it's a resource to allow towns to allocate that money to specific projects. So at Stacy School, we were looking to build a $12 million project over there, and I don't know if you remember, but you know, the, the, the building across the library was, was abandoned. And, um, it, you know, we really had to stand up at town meeting and make the ar argument and tell people why we needed it in that very difficult economic time. And I think, and I'm, I might be a little biased, but I think it's one of the best investments this town has ever made. So I'm sorry, no, Jana. fine. I'm going to wait till you're done. Uh, so order of operations.
Well, it depends upon your project, okay? I mean, there's not guaranteed state money for everything that's out there. Your yeah, first, you, you, your first, you, you, it, again, it depends upon what you're looking to do. So, so generally, if you're looking to do local projects, you need to start locally. You know, whether it's your board of selectmen or whether it's your planning board or, or conservation commission or whatever, but you need to identify what your particular project is, and then that's going to point you in the direction that you need to go. another question actually how do you sure. you talked about sort of um figuring out who your opposition like how do you figure out who's going to be opposed to the project <laughs> if they're not actively writing in they're not forgetting your i project. just <laughs> i've been through so many i just think everybody is <laughs> oh, well, okay that's fine but. um it, you know as you get involved in projects you, you, you know i mean i didn't just wake up one morning and say hey i think we need a new senior center so, you know, I started out as an attorney, and uh, back in the late 1980s, early 1990s, our senior center director called me. He just called me out of the blue. I didn't know anything about senior center. And uh, Ruth Ann Bleakney, and she said, you know, uh, I'm Ruth Ann Bleakney, the director here. I, I, I know you're an attorney, and, uh, you, you know, you've, you've been involved in some things. I need some help down the senior center. Would you be willing to come down and take a look at it and, and, and see what we can do? And I did. And what we did was, the first step that we did is we, we set up a, a private, nonprofit corporation called the Friends of the Seniors. And that allowed folks to make donations, um, and then we had money that we could give to the seniors so that they could use it on particular programs that weren't covered in the budget. So that was 1990. So through that, I was involved with the Senior Center. I came to know a lot of the seniors. I, I, I knew what the problems were, um, what needed to be worked on. And from that process evolved to the, the construction of the senior center. So I mean, I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm old school. I, I think you really start at the bottom. I mean, a good house is built on a strong foundation. And unless I, unless I have the underlying information, whether it's seniors, schools, whatever, I don't, I don't feel comfortable building the roof. So, so I think you really need to get as much information as you can about the particular entity or organization that you're dealing with. That tells you what your problems are, how you can help, how you can do things better, and then, and then you go from there. I, I, I think sometimes, you know, it, it's, and, and I don't know if it's generational, but I mean, it seems as though, you know, some folks just want to come in and, you know, start doing things without really getting that experience and, and background behind it. Um, but that's not the way I've approached things. Kate? Is there ever a project or a project in town where opposition developed out of the blue for some policy reasons? <sighs> you, you know, the first one I got involved in was Draper Park, and I know, I'm sure you remember that, and I know Mike does. Um, you, you know, everybody had an opinion as to how we should honor our veterans. And then, of course, the, the problem was the, the, the pragmatism of trying to get 3,300 names in a limited park, you know, how do you do that? You know, so, so that, that was probably the one that was, um, you know, coming from so many different angles. You know, the school projects, that was a little bit easier. You know, typically, your seniors in the community, well, why do I need a school? Why should I pay right. for the school? It's not gonna help that me. That was the number one complaint. It's yeah. Like, it's good enough for me, why is it good enough for that? Yeah, so, you know. <laughs> Well, and, 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 you know, beyond that, you know, and I think the argument that we made, you know, number one, this is a community, you know what I mean? So folks before you sacrificed so you could go to school, and now it's up to us to, to return that. Yeah, but the thing, yeah, but you got to go beyond that. You got to go beyond that. And what we did, you, you, you know, with the schools is we said, okay, you know, we hear you. We understand that you're on a fixed income. We don't want to increase your taxes. But this is going to be not only a school, it's going to be a community building. So seniors are going to get the opportunity to use it, whether or not it's the gymnasium, whether it's the pool at the high school, whether it's reading programs. So you really need to try to bring the community together. And that's what we did. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.